Hi, Michael. Good to see you again. Well, thank you for letting us come back. When we were here before, we had so many things that hadn't bloomed yet. And we love showing a garden in transition. So thank you for letting us come back to see some of these things. Okay. And one of the most exciting things was that we saw the baby caterpillar of the giant swallowtail on your citrus. Remember? Yes, I do. Y'all remember this from episode five, part one, where we spotted this tiny caterpillar on Michael's citrus tree. Wait till you see it now. Yeah. And let's show the viewers this huge giant swallowtail caterpillar. This thing is huge. Now you're a little more knowledgeable about the caterpillars than mm -hmm. I. If you touch that caterpillar, two large red horned uh, mm -hmm. Protrusions come out of it. Is it just a scare tactic to make it look bigger or more? Yes, but it, if you notice, it also has a very powerful aroma to it. Unpleasant. It's very unpleasant, and it's definitely one of their tactics for warding off predators. You want to come touch it so that we can show sure. the viewers? It won't harm the caterpillar, but it is quite interesting. Let me focus. Okay, go ahead, and if you will, just Whoop. touch it. Ah, there we go. Here you can see that it has gone into chrysalis, which is where it will remain until it emerges as a beautiful giant swallowtail butterfly. You might remember that Michael mentioned he had this water lily that he had transplanted from the Delta, the Cahaba lily. It wasn't blooming that day, but look at it now. It blooms from early May to late June, it's a pollinator nectar plant and is found only in Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. So the last time we were here, your bottle brush tree was not blooming yet. No, and I did not realize until you informed me that they bloom approximately four times a year. They had just started back up time number two, I think, and they are absolutely stunning when they're in full bloom. These are the ones that you suggested I plan about almost five years ago. They were approximately two feet tall mm. when we started and I was surprised at how quickly they grew and how beautiful they became. Well to me they're they're a great evergreen anchor for your butterfly garden. Such a beautiful live oak here. It is. Unfortunately our city within the last few years has decided to take down uh, live oaks and put in another less attractive tree that I don't particularly care for. This was a gift from my neighbors about four blocks down. Mm -hmm. It was about waist high when we put it in three years ago. And as you can see, it has grown quite a bit. Yes, it has. They make your city walkable. You'll have uh, shade to walk in instead of uh, having to carry a, an umbrella or a parasol right. or run from building to building. But <laughs> The potato vine was just an impulse. It grows well. It tolerates the heat down here in downtown. Great ground cover. It, excellent ground cover. It comes back every year, no matter how hot it gets. It doesn't. The the upper part will die off, but the the root looks like a giant carrot. <laughs> it comes back year after year. You know what I'm amazed with, Michael, is that you color coordinated your potato vine with your three varieties of basil. <laughs> I know that was intentional. <laughs> uh, sure. Yes, it was absolutely intentional. <laughs> Talk to us about this beautiful basil bed. Okay. Uh, last year I had the same thing of the three varieties. There's purple basil, Thai basil, sweet basil, and I had a young lady ask me if I used that much of basil. And I said, no, I just, <laughs> I enjoy the smell of it. I enjoy using it as a ground cover. An attractive plant that smells nice and, and you can eat it as, as well. Mm -hmm. In fact, yesterday I had a perfect stranger stop by, jump out of her truck, and grab a few twigs and <laughs> head on down the road, which great. happy for that, knowing that other people are getting as much Absolutely. enjoyment out of, of the plants as I am. We hope it made it its, its way into some uh, pesto. That's right. <laughs> eventually, <laughs> eventually. We were here the other day, Michael. This cosmos wasn't blooming yet. I put them here because the soil is absolutely terrible it's just plain old sand and they seem to do well in the sand tolerate the heat tolerate the 
time periods without rain, and they seem to survive and still bloom. A great pollinator plant. Uh, don't you see butterflies on them? Quite often. They just came up from seed, and I decided to let them go. What is this? Uh, it, it's called um, an impulse buy that I <laughs> slapped in there again. Um, what did we call it? What do we call it? Just because plan. Uh, exactly just because. Right. Just because plan. Some more four o'clocks. Love those. Four o'clocks. I like those because they propagate easily in poor soil, good soil, direct sunlight, shade. And your milkweed is so happy here. They like the shade as well. I was well. going to say, you, you have a good amount of shade in this bed. I use this space for what I call death rack plants. <laughs> Where you go to the chain store and you buy their, their, their uh, dollar plants and you stick them in the ground and pray that they grow. That's one of my favorite vincas. This vinca and this vinca here, um, it matches mm -hmm. almost identical to the four o'clocks. Mm -hmm. Very vibrant color that looks almost neon. I think these have grown about a foot in a week. <laughs> Suzanne, the odd thing about those is they were trash. I dug them up <laughs> from out of the courtyard, intending to throw them away. I threw them out there and forgot to put them in the trash bin. And by the time I remembered them, they had already taken root into the ground and started growing, and I didn't have the heart to dig them up and throw them no, away. Oh, they're so, spectacular. The those. size of these leaves. And they, they help soften this utility light. Yes, they have. do. <laughs> And they I mean, also provide shade for the plants that are underneath. That's so. right. It's a great plant. Here's another patch of the Calancho. I was getting grief from my one of my tenants who said this dirt patch needed to be <laughs> attended to. And so I just took these plantlets. They come off. If you can get a handful of them. Literally just threw them in here and this is the result. A dirt patch to... Something thriving and beautiful, I love it. You just missed one of the dragonflies that flew by uh, for some reason. You, you told me it was the water feature that attracts them. I did not know that. Uh, for the last three years, I've gotten black ones, blue ones, green ones, brown ones, tan ones, yellow ones. I've never seen so many dragonflies downtown uh, of so many, of uh, such a variety of different colors as well. And they're such a great mis natural mosquito control. That is uh, new to me. Uh, you learn the great thing about having a garden. You learn something new every, you every do. day. You do. And I did not realize they were a mosquito control uh, insect. But they're absolutely beautiful. They're just uh, the variety of colors that I see in one location never ceases to amaze me. Well, we never cease to be amazed by a garden like this that is so full of diversity. Thank you for revisiting this garden with us so that we could catch the things that we missed last time. Until next time, join us for a few moments of meditation in the garden.